Hey guys, Level Cap here, and that is me clearly leading my team to victory in today's episode of Loadout. Perhaps not the best game opener, but we did still win the round, so I'll just pretend that it had no effect on the outcome. Now, Loadout is the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you would like me to run with, and I will pick one of the top-rated comments for the next episode. Today's top comment comes from Jezza Corbin MP, who says the Angry Red Baron Loadout, Machine Pistol M1912, the Red Baron P08, AT Grenades, Dynamite, a Stick Grenade, and the Combat Knight. You are the notorious Red Baron. You had a close shave with an enemy anti-aircraft gun, and you lost your iconic plane. Now you must seek revenge against the enemy for the destruction of your beloved triplane. Try to play as central powers when playing on Conquest. Now, I really do like the creativity of this loadout. There has been a Red Baron loadout before, but I think it was primarily centralized around the Red Baron style P08. This one using the machine pistol is a bit more interesting, and I also like the bit of story flair behind it as well. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the machine pistol, it is, oh my god, it is a ridiculous weapon. Now, DICE has tried to balance out this gun by giving it a very small magazine of 16 shots but it shoots them at 1,200 rounds per minute, meaning you're one of the most lethal forces in a 1v1 battle in close quarter combat. Sure, you can sneak out two kills if you're a pro or know how to conserve your ammo properly, but for the most part, this is a one and done weapon. This means in your average combat scenario, you can lazily win a one versus one firefight. The skill comes in in managing this weapon and trying to survive beyond that first kill. Big wide open maps lacking cover are essentially gonna be your worst enemy with this gun. You need to be able to retreat, hide behind cover during the reload process, or switch to a sidearm and deal with your opponent. Luckily, we have a great sidearm like the Obrez that can easily take out multiple enemy, oh wait, sorry, we don't we don't have the Obrez. We have the P08 Red Baron Edition. Oh, the P08, not, not my favorite sidearm. Definitely a runner up for my least favorite sidearm out there. The damage per shot is not impressive. The rate of fire, accuracy, damage over range is nothing to brag about, and I find that it's a hard pistol to get one kill with, let alone multiple kills. So going from this weapon to a P08 sidearm as backup is just ugh, ugh, not my favorite, but uh, it's doable. It's workable. For the most part, I just tried to run away as much as possible and get the machine pistol reloaded so I didn't have to rely on my sidearm. Now, admittedly, Volga River probably isn't the best place to showcase this pistol. You can get a bit of cover when you're running up towards the center of the map and there's a few trenches around and whatnot, but really working with a weapon that has a bit more range on it seems to be more practical for this map. I just happened to join a server and thought, I, you know, what the heck, I'll test it out here. But when I was playing on like Scar or uh, Amien in previous videos in which I've used this weapon, uh, I found it to be far more effective as my retreat and cover ability is just uh, always there. I can always use it, not always available on Volga River. Sometimes you really need to deal with targets at range or you're not gonna be able to escape. And so sometimes you just can't escape with this gun. Fortunately, as you can see in these clips here, I was able to sort of manage uh, my retreat somewhat effectively hiding around corners. Sometimes there's people that were clearly in line of sight of me, but just didn't see me as I was kind of being a snack and hiding in dark areas and whatnot. Sometimes if you just don't move and shoot, people will easily run by you, especially in the thick of intense snow combat. Now, as you can see there, I was able to sort of burst fire down a target at further ranges. You can extend the use of this weapon to medium range in a pinch if your target is not moving. Um, so it does have a little bit of flexibility in that department, but it's tricky. Again, if your target's moving, ADAD spam, and you start missing some of those 16 shots you got in that magazine that quickly become inaccurate because of the rate of fire, you're gonna be in a bit of trouble. So it's a very, very limited situation weapon. Now, I did play a little bit of Lepkow Pass after Volga River. Sometimes you just get into a server and you're like, ah, let's try out the next map, see how it works. Lepkow Pass was worse than Volga River. I didn't actually stay for the entire round just because 
it was really hard to try and close the distance in this map and I figured you know what why spend my time on a map that's really not going to be good for this loadout so I backed out joined a game on Scar one of my favorite maps because it allows you a lot of variability if you want to snipe you can play long range if you want to go close quarters you can go into the city and that's what I did I went into the city for a lot of it on Scar and was able to get some very cool close quarter combat and that is where this loadout started to kick some butt and again this gun is going to be ideal when the enemy team is not organized if you know you're going up against like a clan that's playing in the server and they're on voice comms and they're moving together and working together it's going to be really hard because once you kill one of them the next one's going to charge you or be right in your face right away if you're playing in a casual environment with disorganized teams who uh, aren't really telling each other what's going on then this weapon is going to do better and i do find it funny how so many different guns in battlefield can perform amazingly well when you're up against the exact right kind of opponent a disorganized slow to react enemy is the best possible situation for using the machine pistol now when it comes to the other gadgets and whatnot, the anti-tank grenades are kind of self-explanatory, very effective at taking down other vehicles. Then we have dynamite. Personally, I'd run with the AT rocket gun as it would give me a few more ranged options, even for going up against infantry, and I generally like using it for finishing off vehicles at a distance. Dynamite is something that I'll admit I'm not very practiced with. Uh, and here comes that potato P08. Let's see if the second reload does the trick. All right, finally took him out there. It was funny because I dropped those first two guys almost instantly and then really, really took a long time taking down that next guy as he took down my teammate as well. Just again, with the P08 there, I'm not sure the Obrez would have done it faster, but uh, I just felt like I was in a bit of a pickle with that sidearm. Now, coming back to the dynamite situation, the thing that I think I struggle with is that I'm used to using C4 in other Battlefield games, where I can just slap it on a wall or the side of a building, blow a hole, and run through. Well, in Battlefield 1, it doesn't stick, and I found myself throwing dynamite at buildings and it not blowing holes in the wall because the dynamite would sit a little too low, the blast radius would be too low, and I'd get no hole in the building. So, if you want that kind of effect, the limpet charge is perfect with the support class, but not available on the assault class. So I just need to practice with the dynamite a bit more, understand its limitations and sort of work within them. It's just one of those things that uh, I've never really found the use for dynamite because AT grenades and AT rocket guns are so damn useful, I, I never find myself picking it. Now, something I also noticed while using this weapon is that it is a far more effective weapon to use on the offense than it is on the defense. So even if you're playing on conquest, if you're rushing a point, you're generally going to do better with this gun because you kind of control when you're going to engage your enemy. If people are hiding in or huddled in a building or around an objective area and you take out one of them, you don't have to immediately push in and engage the next guy. You can back off long enough to get the reload off with the weapon and then go in for the next kill and so on and so forth. And that seemed to be my general strategy when clearing points to sort of move around the outskirts, get a kill, run away, reload, get another kill until everybody on the point was dead. However, when you're defending a point, and you got a whole squad rushing in at once, you no longer have the ability to lengthen out the engagement so you can get your reload off. You're more of a one and done situation and then rely on that sidearm. And when your sidearm is the P08, good luck defending the point. So try and stay on the offense whenever possible. Now, a reloading tip for this weapon, generally speaking in previous Battlefield games, it could be beneficial to leave a round in the chamber. You don't wanna do this with this weapon because you're gonna have to start reloading bullets individually instead of eight round stripper clips. Now, if you have eight rounds left in your weapon, then go for the reload as you'll just put one new stripper clip in and that'll be a very quick reload. But otherwise, I just kind of mag dump into my enemy so I can get as fast to reload as possible. Anyway, I did enjoy the loadout, but if you try it out, make sure you pick a map that is appropriate for it. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave your comments down below for next week's episode, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.